church. Uh, we're going to worship, and I want to invite you into that. So wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, uh, we just want to invite you into this encounter with us. Uh, it's going to be a good day. So let's worship. Fill me 
was in a day that you let me fall And with all of my life, your love has been true And with all of my life, I will worship We cry. 
I've been hearing the words throughout the week of whose report am I going to believe? Because in the book of Numbers um, 13 and verse 2, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy on the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the people of Israel. See, God gave an assignment, but along with that assignment, he went ahead and gave the statement of victory. He said, this is your assignment, but I've already done it. It's finished. And today we're living in an assignment, but we've already been given the promise of victory. So today we choose to believe the report of the Lord, and we choose to walk out a life of victory. We can choose to believe his report, and when we feel the fear at the unknown future comes in our minds and clouds our thoughts, we go back to the promise that God's already given us, the promise that he began with. You can trust him. He's faithful. He's faithful to complete every promise. Every promise that's been spoken over your life, every promise that he's given us in his word, and the promises that he's given you now in this time. So God, we come before you, trusting you, believing that you are our provider. You are the provider of our finances. You are the provider of wisdom. God, not only are you the provider, but you're the protector of my health and you are the protector of my family. You are a creator. And this means you can create anything that needs to be created. And not only that, God, you can give us wisdom, new innovations. There's absolutely nothing that can stop you, God. So, Lord, we place our trust in you because you've already promised the victory. And we choose to believe your report. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, good morning, Harbor family, and all those who are watching with us from wherever you may be. Welcome to church. Um, as, a, as this house does, we like to make declarations over our offering. And today, I'm going to make some declarations. And Harbor folks, this is different than what we normally do. So um, we're going to do some different ones today. Today... I choose to trust you, God, with my health and with my family. I choose to trust you, God, with my job and with my money. I choose to trust you, God, with my peace and my shelter. I choose to believe the report of the Lord. And I choose to believe the promise that God has made to me. I choose to believe that nothing is impossible with God. Amen. And there are... The ways that you can give listed on the screen. Um, and you can follow us on Facebook throughout this week to stay up to date with the events and things that are happening, all the announcements, all the reminders. Um, you can subscribe to YouTube where we post our services not only on Facebook but also on YouTube. And um, sign up for any text updates that you would like to receive by testing texting the word harbor h-a-r-b-o-r to nine seven zero 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 so awesome to have everyone with us this morning and pastor come bring your word there's such a beautiful presence of the lord in this place this morning as usual i love our house i love the heart of our worship i love this worship team but more so than that i just love the presence of god so i hope right in your living room where you are this morning that you feel the same presence of god that we feel here i believe that you do and um while you're getting your bibles out i want to just share a couple of things with you first of all i want to share with you that it's, um, it's an interesting season that we're in. Um, Friday night, we were here, we were doing some live, and uh, we had all kinds of te technical difficulties and things that you don't typically deal with, uh, normal Sunday morning church stuff, and if you do, it just kind of is in the crowd, and it's, you know, it's missed. But, uh, and then I was flipped on the news uh, last night, and 
and one of the news anchors was uh, apologizing for technical difficulties because they were shorthanded with their staff. And I know this is a different times that you're sitting at home this morning in front of your TV or your iPad or maybe a phone in your hand and you're, uh, you're, you're watching online. But here's what I want to tell you. In the midst of all the technical difficulties and all the things that are going on, um, God still remains. He's not having any technical issues at all. And he wants to come into your living room this morning, and he wants to touch your heart, and um, he wants to heal those that are sick. And before I even speak today, I just want to, I just want to declare that those that have been infected by this virus, whether it be... Um, whether it be you're sick with the virus or that you're, you've lost your job or, you've, or whatever difficulties may come from this uh, pandemic that we're experiencing right now. I want to say this. God is for you. And the word tells of us God is for us, then who can stand against us? And I want you to declare that over your life this morning. I want you to declare that God is good. He's going to take care of us. I love these declarations that my wife uh, spoke today. Uh, I, I pray that we just continue to declare the word of the Lord over our life and believe in the promises of God. I'm going to share with you this morning uh, from Psalms 46. Psalms 46. This is something that's been stirring on my heart uh, for most of the week. And uh, this little passage of Scripture in Psalms 46 and 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that that I am God. There's a lot of uh, requests have been made to, of us to be in our houses at this time. I mean, it's been mandated that we stay at home and, and that we do that. And I think that's good. I think that they're doing the right thing. This is a perfect time in our life to find a place to be still, take out your Bibles, uh, spend some time with the Lord, take out a notebook. I believe that in the middle of what uh, seems to be like a crisis is really a time when we can get to know God in a very special way. That we can stop all the busyness of life, stop all the running and all the rat race of life, get our families together, spend some alone time, and let's just get to know God. The scripture goes on to say, I will be exalted among the nations. I believe this is a time that God wants to be exalted, in, not just in our nation, but uh, around the globe. I will be exalted in the earth. We're praying for God's glory to come and just fill the earth during this season of our life. And the Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our fortress. In the middle of all the chaos, he's our fortress that we can run to. In the middle of all the situations going on, he is our fortress that we can run to. And Tony, he cares about our life. He already knows the end from the beginning. He's already, he's already looking at our life, Peyton. He's already saying, look, I got this. Be still and know that I am God. I am God. I am God. And when God created the heavens and the earth, he already knew about this day. He already knew about all this. He knew what, what these things would come. And in the middle of all of the situation, he's standing firm. He's not moved. He's not, he's not changed. He's the same today that he was yesterday, and he'll be the same tomorrow. He is the same. So what is it that he really wants us to know when he says, be still and know? He's saying, I want you to know me. I want you to have a relationship with me. I want you to come near to me. I want you to come close to me. I remember as a, a kid uh, when I would have a problem in my life, I would, I would go to my father and I would, I would go to my dad and say, Dad, I, I, I got a situation in my life. And, and he would talk me through those situations as I was growing up, still does today. I remember the prayers that my mother prayed for us. I remember how that I always knew that there was a prayer covering over our life. And our heavenly father cares for us even greater than our earthly father and mother do. And he's saying, I want you to come to me with all your burdens, all the pressures of all this that's going on, and I want you to come and know that I am here for you. Be still and know, and I'm your fortress. I'm here for you. I want to be exalted among the nations. I want to be exalted in the earth. So what does it mean to know God? 
What does it mean to know God? The Apostle Paul said it like this. Oh, that I might know him. My passion to be consumed with him. It's my passion to be consumed with who he is. And all of the, all the things that I need to know, all the things that I need to experience, the thing that, that matters the most, that, that my passions are consumed with him. Not of my own religion, not my own righteous, not my own thing, but knowing that God is faithful and he will always be. That gives me comfort. I don't know about you, but that gives me great comfort to know that God is faithful, that he remains the same, he's not moved by all of these things, and he's standing in our midst. And I believe that right now is the church's finest hour. I believe this is our finest hour. I believe this is the, 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 the moment that we can really see God's glory revealed in the earth, that we can see the glory of God come in a way that we've never seen the glory of God before. And I don't say this to be, to be, uh, to be rude or I, I don't want it to sound like I'm coming across uh, unkind, but you know, uh, we as American people, we're so spoiled. I mean, we're, we're all upset because we can't go to our favorite restaurant. <laughs> We're, we're all bit out of shape because we can't hang out at our, 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 our local hangout and, and, and chill with people. We're upset because this thing has interrupted our lives. It's interrupted our, our, our fun activities. It's inru- interrupted our, our going to work. It's interrupted our life. But in the middle of all this interruption, there's one thing that remains, God's faithfulness. And if we can recognize that this is the moment that we can, can, we can be the light to the world, the church can be the true light that shines in the darkness, and we can bring the glory of God to this earth. And so I'm saying, hey, church, rise up. It's time to rise up. It's time to rise up and be counted. It's time to, to put away our, our complaining and our woe is me, but to look up at our, our Redeemer and look at him and say, God, you are so good in this moment. I'm trusting in you. In the Passion Translation, it reads like this. Surrender your anxiety. Be solid. Stop your striving, and you will see that I am God. Oh, we need to surrender this anxiety, anxiety and stress. Surrender it. I'm on the phone constantly talking to people and walking with people through this this thing, and I I don't want to make light of this virus because I think it's a very serious thing, so don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I have... Uh, friends and people that are affected by this in many different ways. I, I know there's people being affected today just b- being laid off work and even employ, employers having to lay people off that they don't want to lay off. It's just a, it's, it's a very difficult time, so I'm not making light of that. But, but I can tell you this, it's, a, it's proven that stress can kill us as quick as a virus. Anxiety and the pressure of life. And he's saying, look, I don't want you to live under all this pressure and all this anxiety, I want you to stop for a moment. Be silent. Calm yourself down. Let God speak to your heart. Stop your striving so that you can know God. He said, I'm the God above all the nations, and I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. Surrender your anxiety. Everybody say, surrender your anxiety. I'm going to say that in your home this morning. I'm going to surrender my anxiety. And that those who know him must not live in a spirit of fear, but we must allow our faith to soar at this moment. We must must ride on the wings of our faith and say, God is good. And I look back at the times he's helped me before. I look back at the seasons of life that he's been faithful to me. I look back when I thought, man, this this is the end. And actually, it was the beginning of something great. I was just walking through a little moment, a little situation. But when I got on the other side, I looked and like, wow, God, you was teaching me something in that. You was showing me something in that. First Peter 5 says this, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I want you to know this morning that he is crazy in love with you. And there's people right that has that has gone through situations prior to this, and you've seen God show up in those situations. He is in this situation right now, but when you come out of this situation, there's going to be other situations that's going to arise in your life. I can promise you that. I can guarantee you that you're going to have other situations in your life. That's a guarantee. 
But when we learn to cast our cares upon him, knowing how crazy in love he is with us, knowing how much he loves us, then we, we could, we, it, it settles the thing. It settles the anxiety in us. We're like, you know what? I'm not going to fret. I'm just going to know that God cares for me, and he's here for me. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom, someone to devour. The enemy would like to come in right now during all this chaos and, and just plant all kinds of seeds in your thoughts of, of this is the end, this is doomsday, this is it. I'm telling you that we need to look up for our redemption draweth nigh, and God is for us. Resist him. Resist the devil. You know, I, I think when I think about resisting the devil, I think about this word that is... Um, <laughs> Um, ignore. Now, I, I'm 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 going to say this. This is a little funny, but I live in a house full of women. Th- they can just flat out ignore you. They just have this ability when you're talking to them just to ignore you. I I, I can't even get a good fight started. They just ignored me. Resist the devil. Sometimes we just got to ignore the enemy. Just ignore the enemy. Just pretend that you don't even hear his voice. Like, he's blah, 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 and you're just ignoring the enemy. You're not even paying attention to what he's saying. I'm just ignoring you. You have no voice in my life. That's how I feel sometimes. I feel like I don't have a voice, you know, and that just ignore me. Do we need to do that to the enemy today? He's like, you don't have a voice in my life. You don't have a voice in my life. <laughs> Stand firm in our faith knowing that the same kind of suffering is being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the wor- whole world. This is a time to say, not to get in a pity party and say, I'm all poor as me. I'm the only one living through that. No, we're all living through the same storm at the same time. Same storm at the same time. There's a little passage of Scripture. I, I won't take a second of this, but the passage of Scripture when the disciples were in the storm and God came and he, uh, Jesus come and he spoke and he said, peace be still. And there's a little passage of Scripture that goes falls below that and said, and there were other little ships. You ain't the only one in this storm. Quit letting the enemy beat you up, like make you feel like you're the only one in this situation. You're not the only one here and you're not the only one that's going to make it out of here. God's going to, he's here for all of us. And so church, rise up. Let's be counted right now. Knowing that some kind of suffering, this kind of suffering is spirits in all the world. And after you have suffered a little while, somebody say it's going to get over with. It's going to pass. This is going to go away. The God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever amen so what does it mean to humble ourselves in the lord i just want you to consider these five things when it comes to humbling i believe it's a call to action i don't think humbling yourself is is to be weak i don't think it's to be weak i think to humble yourself is a call to action number one confess your sins to god it's so important that we take some time to say, God, I just want to confess my sins before you, Lord. I want to be right before you, God. It's not like he doesn't already know, right? So why not just confess our sins? And then the scripture tells us confessing our faults one to another that we might be healed. So it's important to find someone in your life that you can confess your faults to, that our lives can be healed, that our, that our hearts can be healed, that our soul can be healed by saying, God, I, 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 here I am. I just confess my faults and and find someone you can trust. Number two, forgive others that have wounded you, and you will be forgiven. Don't go around holding on to something in your life. You, you want to get to know God? You've got to release those, those hurts off of your life. Family members that may have wounded you, church members that may, uh, that may have wounded you, uh, leaders that in your life that may have hurt you. Release those wounds out of your life. Release those things, and God will forgive them as you, uh, forgive you as you forgive them. Don't go around with bitterness in your heart. Number three, submit to authority. Submit to authority. That seems almost like a foreign thing in our culture today. Submit to authority and learn to see, receive correction. I'm so glad I got people in my life that correct me that bring correction into my life. My wife's sitting here today. I I let her do do some correcting in my life. Sometimes I don't like that. 
Sometimes she'll say things to me. I'm like, what? But I've learned through the years that having someone to bring correction into your life, having, having people in your life that you trust, people that you can confess your faults to, people that can bring correction, people that you can follow. It's so important in our life. Number four, choose to serve others over yourself. Don't sit in a pity party and talk about how bad life is. Listen, if you're going through a situation right now and you don't know, uh, well, I, I'm, just, I'm just feeling so down out, why don't you go find somebody to serve? Why don't you pick up the phone and call somebody? Why don't you, why don't you encourage somebody? Don't sit around and, and, and think, woe is me. Humble yourself. Fall, uh, find someone to serve. Do something good for someone else. And number five, cultivate a grateful heart that is not prideful. Don't be arrogant. Don't, don't be arrogant. Cultivate a grateful heart. You know how to, you know how to not be arrogant? Look around you and see how thankful you are. Tell your, tell your wife, tell your kids, tell the people around you, hey, I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful for having you in my life. I'm thankful to God for what he's given me. I'm thankful for, for the home that I live in. I'm thankful for the car that I drive. I'm thankful that I have clothes to wear. Have a, cultivate a grateful heart, not a complaining spirit. That brings humility in our lives. So how do we cast all of our anxiety upon him. Philippians tells us, be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, 6, and the Passion Translation goes like this. Don't be pulled in different directions or worry about a thing. Don't worry about a thing. But, but Pastor, I mean, come on. You're telling me, honestly, don't be worried about something? Come on, you, are, <laughs> are you seeing what's going on around us? I don't know if I'm going to have a job next week, or I don't know how... I, I'm, I, I don't know. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to our president for what they're doing. I'm thankful for all the things that, that our leaders are trying to do. But listen, if you've got your hope and your, your hope is in government, if your hope is in, a, in, in, in this world systems, man, we're already in trouble. We're already in trouble. Don't be pulled in all kinds of different directions and worry about those things. Know God. Get in a place where you're trusting him for the things that you need. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Get up in the morning, put some worship music on. Start your day with prayer. Start your day with God with thankfulness. Uh, offer your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Come to the Lord. Tell the Lord what, what you need. Hey, God, you know, I need you to provide for me. And, Lord, this is my need. This is where, I, where I'm at. I, and I believe that God's going to put the things in your life that you need because his promises are yea and amen. He's not going to abandon us. He's for us. So trust the Lord. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answer known to you through Jesus Christ. If you're looking for answers today, I want to encourage you to get to know him. People seem to be anxious about virtually everything. It strikes fear in their hearts and their minds, and we're overtaken with this constant thought that wars in our mind, wars in our heart, wars in our very being. We find peace only in him. We find peace only in him. So we, we cast down all those thoughts and those imaginations that come in our life. We cast those things down. And we cast our cares upon him. And then as we cast our cares upon him and we trust him with our life and we li live our life full of prayer and worship, then there's an open heaven over our life. And he begins to pour out a blessing on us that we cannot even contain. He pours out his spirit upon us in a ways that we cannot even understand. He brings peace to us in our life. There's an open heaven that, that comes and fills us with his joy and his peace and his love. In every event, event in our lives, God's grace is working in our lives. He's already working. Before you ever got up this morning, Audrey, and prayed, he, he already knew your need. Before you, before you ever got up and even thought about it, he already knew your need. So when you come to him and say, here, Lord, this is, this is my prayer, he says, I got that. I got that. I, I'm working for you. I'm already working. I've already got that planned out. You're like, well, it don't feel like you got it planned out, God. It don't look like there's an answer right now. I feel like I'm, I'm walking in some uncharted territories. He goes, I got you. 
Trust me, it's going to be good. Stand firm in your faith in his divine counsel. Go to the Lord for counsel. What are you speaking, God? What are you speaking, God? Now, look, listen, I think it's, I, I'll, I'll watch the news, but let, 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 let's let this be our guide. Let's let this be this word of God and our prayer time and our worship. Let this be our guide. Let this be our counsel. You can check in and see what's going on with the world with the news, but when you want to know truth, you've got to come to this. When you want to know what your provision is for tomorrow, you've got to get back into the word of God, and you, you will know and you will live a, a, a life with a calm spirit. A calm spirit. And allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life. I mean, let the Holy Spirit just work in your life. The Spirit of God is already living in us. If we are believers, the Spirit of God is living in us. And let the Holy Spirit that's living in us calm our spirit man. And stand firm in the foundation of your faith. I can't say that enough. Stand firm in the foundation of your faith. Stop striving. Stop striving. It's our natural reaction that when we're drowning is to fight back. Oh, I'm drowning in all these bills. I'm drowning in all this uncertainty. I'm drowning in all this situation. And we begin to panic. And I remember as a kid being trained uh, in, school, in, uh, in Boy Scouts how to be a lifeguard. And one of the things they said is, look, when people panic, you've got to do something to restrain them, to stop them from panicking when they're drowning because they will take you under with them. And listen, there's nothing the enemy wants to do more than to make us panic in this situation. Let's stop our striving. Let's stop fighting against what's already come to save us. You've already experienced the power of his saving grace. When you believed on the Lord, you experienced the power. It took faith to say, God is my Savior, to believe on him, to cast your care upon him at that moment. So, God, I trust in you. And the scripture tells us that, that when we believed on him, that, that our lives will be changed. And we say, Jesus, you went to the cross. You died for our sins. But not only did you die for our sins, when you, when you rose, you went to death, and you went to hell, and you took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And you took the keys, and you said, I'm going to give them to every believer, the keys to the kingdom of God. We hold the keys to the kingdom of God. As believers, we hold the promise of God right in our hand. We hold the keys in our hand. And he has given us the power to overcome. Jesus asked Peter this question, and I'm about to close. Worship team can come. Peter spoke and said, Jesus spoke to Peter and said, Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? And Peter come back to Jesus and said, You're the anointed one, the son of the living God. Matthew 16 goes on to tell us this, and he said, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven's realm to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. And when we come to know him, we already know what he's saying, what God is speaking. It's in those quiet moments of our life that we're, we're hearing the voice of God and he's speaking truth over our lives. And we take what he is speaking and we declare it upon the earth. And we begin to speak those things that God is already saying. You want to know, have, your, have your prayers answered, pray what God is speaking. Pray what God is saying. If you, if you want your prayers answered, get close to him. In those intimate times, he will begin to tell you what, what he's thinking. There's this knitting together, this weaving together of his promises in our lives. And we start declaring those things. God, I know that you are our provider. Your word declares it in our life. And I'm living out of a place of faith, not fear. I'm living out of a place of abundance it may not look like abundance, but it's abundance because we know him. So this is the time for the church to walk in its full authority. We hold the keys to the kingdom in our hand. We hold the keys to promise in our hand. We're not carrying around the anxiety or striving or living by the world standards, but we're activating our faith. And the church is returning to its first love, the thing that matters the most. In the middle of all this chaos, come on, church. God's called us to lead. He's called us to step out front. This morning, this morning alone, there will be thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of sermons being preached on the airways. What a wonderful time this is that we can declare God's goodness upon the earth. 
Maybe you're watching today and at home. Maybe you've watched some other Sunday morning services at home and, and there's this thing happening in your heart right now and God's speaking to you right in your living room. Maybe you, you've, you, you've drifted away from God. Maybe you've never known God, but He wants to give you this promise today that you don't have to live in fear, but God is for you. And when you bow your knees before Him and you say, God, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. I trust you with my life, oh God. Fill me with your spirit, God, so I want to, so every day I can live in the abundance and live in the provision, live in the power, live in the strength of God. God, fill my life with your goodness. I just want to know you, Lord. I want to know you. I want to challenge you this morning. I want to challenge you just right where you are. To say, God, I want to know you. I want to know you. Church, I want to challenge you to let's return to our first love. Let's return to what matters most. Let's take some time in this season that we're in to pray and to fast and to seek the Lord and say, God, I want to turn off all the chaos around me and I want to know you. And let's bring heaven to earth let's bring the light of the gospel to the world let's bring the truth of his love to all those that are around us I go back to my text this morning and it says in Psalms 46 and God will be exalted upon, among the nations I believe this is the season when God's going to be exalted among the nations and God will be exalted in the earth and the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our fortress I run to him I stand upon his promises I don't come in fear I come in faith when I say I run to him I'm not even coming in fear I'm coming in faith saying God I'm standing on your promises that you're we're pulling on heaven today we're pulling on heaven today we're saying God let your promises be yea and amen so if you want to know the Lord you're not going to find him in the doomsday message being spoke by the media. You're not going to find him in the, the negativity that's around you, but you're going to find him in that quiet place with you alone with him. And you just surrender your heart to the Lord this morning. You will find him in that quiet place. He'll begin to speak to your spirit. So invite him into your life this morning. The scripture says he stands at the door and knocks. He wants to come in and abide. He wants to come into your life. He wants to come into your home. He wants to come into your car. He wants to come into your workplace. He wants to come into every moment of your life. He don't want to be just a Sunday morning God. He wants to be an everyday relationship God. A place of intimacy. A place of closeness. He wants to abide with you, not just in the middle of this pandemonium that we're in right now, not just in the middle of the crisis we're in right now, but he wants to abide in your life every single day, every moment of your life. So I want to pray with you this morning. I want to pray and I want to declare over your life that that God is good. He loves you. He cares about you. He wants you to experience him. He wants you to get to know Him. He wants you to push aside everything out of your life. All the fears and all the anxiety and all the strife and all the struggle. And just reach up to Him and say, God, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you, Jesus. I want to invite you into my heart today, God. So God, forgive me. Forgive me of the busyness of my life. Forgive me, God, of the going, the to, and the fro, and just busy, 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 and not taking the time to know you. Forgive me, Lord, that it's in a moment like this that I, that I, I, I begin to wonder where you are because I haven't spent time with you on a daily basis. You see, Daniel, he didn't have to cry out to God in the lion's den because he had already had a relationship with God long before he got thrown into the lion's den. 
So he trusted God. He said, God, I know you're going to shut the mouth of these lines that I, I can live through this. The three Hebrew boys said, Lord, if we burn in the fire or if we don't, you're still God because we already know who you are. And I challenge you today, I challenge you in this moment just to get to know him. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace that's in our life. We thank you for your goodness in our life. We thank you for the joy of the Lord. And I speak peace over every home today. I speak joy over every home. And I call for the church today to rise up. Let's rise up in prayer. Let's rise up in fasting. And let's rise up to see the salvation of the Lord and see the goodness of God in this moment that we live. God bless you. Let's worship.